Our story today comes to us from Denmark, and it is called The Wild Swans. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a king in his castle. The king was very lonely for many long years because he had lost his queen. So finally, one day, the king decided to remarry. It was a joyous day, not only for the king, but also for his eleven sons and daughters. But one day, soon thereafter, their joy did turn to sorrow. The new queen soon locked the princess in her room and then cast a spell on her eleven brothers. In a shower of thunder and lightning, the princes were transformed into eleven white swans. forward. You may return to your human form only by night. For you see, <laughs> this new queen was really an evil witch who could not bear the sight of such lovely and innocent children. With the sounds of sadness in their voices, the swan princes flew off, perhaps never to see their home again. From that moment forward, not a day went by that the young princess did not think of her ill-fated brothers. Now it was the wicked witch who truly held the reins of power over the castle. The princess felt such great sorrow for her father, cut off from his children and left helpless by the black-hearted witch. The princess could not bear to think of her father like this. She had no choice but to leave the castle and search for her brothers, no matter how far or how long it might take. That night, carrying only her brother's boots, the princess stole secretly out of the castle. The princess traveled near and far, through forest and over mountains, but her search was to no avail. It looked as though her brothers were lost to her forever. But then, one day, as night was about to fall, she found a cottage beside a mountain lake. Inside, the princess discovered many beds lined up in a row, and when she counted them, they equaled eleven. I wonder, could it be? The princess's heart began to beat loudly, and then she heard them, their feathers white as snow against the evening sky. Eleven magnificent swans came flying across the lake toward the cottage. The princess dropped the boots she had been carrying those many days and sought to hide behind a pile of straw. The sun set as they entered the cottage, and as its last rays disappeared over the horizon, the wild swans were transformed into eleven handsome princes. What's this? Why, these look like the boots I left behind in our castle. How could they have gotten here? My brother, at last I found you. It was a most joyous reunion for them all. They talked throughout the night and she told them of the queen's wicked ways and how their father yearned only for the day when he might see all of his children again. But early the next morning, her brothers were once again transformed into swans, and they flew off to she knew not where. Oh, if only there were some way to break that evil witch's spell over my brothers. It was then that a very old lady appeared from out of the forest. Shall I show you the way to break the witch's spell? Oh, yes, you must, please. All I ask is that you follow my instructions to the letter. Do you think you can do that? Oh, yes, of course. I will do anything to break the spell on my brothers so that they may once again return to our father. All right, then I shall tell you. But heed my words well. You must gather reeds and brambles and crush them into fine straw so that you may knit eleven jackets. When these jackets are placed upon the wild swan's backs, the spell will be broken. But from the instant you begin to weave until the last swan has donned his jacket, you must speak not one word, no matter what might happen. For if you shall, your brothers will be struck dead on the spot. 
The princess did not lose a minute in beginning her task. The reeds chafed her hands, and the brambles cut into her feet, but still the princess worked on. Her expectation of the joy in her father's eyes when he and his sons would be reunited more than overcame the pain as she worked. But then, one day as she was working, a prince from a neighboring castle happened by and was immediately captivated by her beauty. You are the loveliest thing I have ever seen. Won't you do me the honor of returning with me to my castle and becoming my bride? The princess remembered her vow and could not tell him that she must remain there until she had finished knitting her eleven jacket. The handsome prince gathered her up and together they rode off toward his castle. And soon as they arrived, he took her to meet his mother the queen so that he might ask her permission to marry. But the queen made no reply to her son. The queen could not give them permission to marry because she feared that this strange, silent girl had been bewitched and might bring a curse to their entire castle. The handsome prince could do nothing but wait and hope that the queen might change her mind. And while he waited, the young princess continued her knitting, knowing that their only hope was for her to complete her task. And when the handsome prince saw how important her knitting was to her, he left her to her task, and never once did he insist on knowing the reason why. Never had she met such a kind and considerate person, and her feelings soon turned to love. Every evening when dark had fallen, the princess crept out of the castle and into the fields to gather reeds and brambles for her knitting. The bramble thicket lay beside a dark and frightening cemetery, haunted by bats and eerie shadows. But this did not stop the princess. Her only thoughts were of the day when she could finish the eleven jackets and everyone would be free. One night, the queen saw her go into the cemetery to gather brambles. Here was proof positive that the princess was indeed a witch in disguise. As soon as she returned to the castle, she told her son of what she had seen and forbade him to see the princess again. It's a lie. I don't care if you are my mother. It can't be. I have spoken. There will be no marriage. According to the laws of our land, the witch must be burned at the stake. There are no exceptions. It is the law. It must be obeyed. Do you understand? No, you can't. Oh. The queen's word was final. No matter how he pleaded, she would not change her command. Guards were waiting for the princess when she returned from the fields. But even though she was cast into a deep, dark dungeon, she continued her knitting. But as the sun's first rays broke over the horizon, it was the eleven wild swans. Oh, my brothers, over here, over here, she wanted to cry out. But to do so would have condemned her brothers to the same fate she was now facing. Her heart was breaking as she watched them disappear into the morning sky. The hour of her execution was near, and the guards came to lead her away. But even now, she continued her knitting. Just a few more stitches and she would be finished. But it looks as though she is too late. Oh, my brothers, you must find me. You must receive your jackets, she cried out in her heart. was the wild swans. I knew you would find me. She began to throw the jackets into the air one by one. And when she had done, there appeared her eleven princely brothers. Oh, my brother! Once the curse was broken, the princess was free to tell all that had happened. 
The queen was proud to know that her son had chosen such a brave and loyal girl and quickly gave permission for them to marry. It was a glorious wedding, and they lived happily ever after. Meanwhile, her brothers returned to their castle, banished the wicked queen from the land, and freed their father. Peace and prosperity was theirs forever. <laughs>